Hey guys, it's DBJ. This is a uh, long overdue response to uh, uh, Juice, Tabletop Gaming with Juice and others about growing your character while in game. So I came up with um, 10 ways to grow your character while in the game. I'm going to list them below as well as uh, right now and I'll list them, uh, summarize them again at the end of the video. So anyway, my, my top 10 ways of uh, <clears throat> excuse me, growing a character in game. And that would be um, learn, hate, love, fear, adopt, change, support, need, discover, and establish. And I'm going to go through all of them. So it's going to be a little lengthy, but that's all right. I, I think you guys know me when I start to ramble on and on. All right. The first one is learn. And this one involves picking, um, learning one new trait about each player character in your group. So you've made your character, you've got your build, you put some backstory into it, you're ready to play, you sit down and challenge yourself to learn one new thing about each player character at the table or your, you know, your hangout um, in that game. So ask someone about the holy symbol hanging from their backpack. Ask someone about the, um, the ring that they always fiddle with on their finger about the runes on their sword, about why they hate their brother-in-law, um, about their quest to return the princess, uh, why it is that um, you darn elves hate my dwarven race. Ask people those things in the game and accept their responses without any preamble or misconception or presupposition on your part. So. The idea is not to engage them in argument or engage them in conflict, although these can be really good ways to create like character conflict and, uh, and compromise situations. But the idea is to learn something about each person. And then the next second part of that is to reference what you've learned about their character later on, right? So your dwarven fighter hates the, uh, the elven archer and you two butt heads, and you're like, well, I don't understand why your people hate mine. And he's like, well, we've, we've been at war with your people for centuries. I don't understand why you just don't understand why you can't keep your, you know, stay in your own place or something like that, something really arrogant. And later in the game, reference that same thing that you learned about the elf if you're the dwarven fighter. So later in the game, you mention to the elf, your elven kind seems to think that we need to remain in our place, but you were the ones that began the conflict centuries ago when you stole our, you know, our forging abilities to forge weapons, which is where your elven weapons come from, or something of that nature. And it could be something small, minor, um, asking the cleric about their faith, asking um, the rogue why do they keep twiddling, twisting the ring on their finger, um... What is that strange picture that the, the uh, barbarian keeps pulling out of their pack to stare at? Something like that. Learn something. All right. The second part is hate. And I put hate in here, um, although it does seem to go along the same lines as fear, but as your character encounters something, let's say there's lizard men, maybe you learn to hate lizard kind. You know, I don't trust the lizard men. I don't like them. So as you start to adventure on, maybe you encounter troglodytes. Maybe you encounter dragonborn. Maybe you encounter naga or giant snakes or something of that nature. And y your character role plays their, their hatred of, the, of that kind until proven otherwise, right? So you encounter the, 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 the lizard people and they attack your group. So... You're like, oh man, I can't, I can't stand these non-human looking lizard-like things walking around with weapons and stuff. It just freaks me out. Next you encounter Dragonborn with some troglodytes or something. And maybe they're fighting each other. And you're like, we don't need to get involved. I hate them both. I hope they wipe each other out. And then 
the character learns that the Dragonborn are just as honorable and 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 forthright as the character. You're like, well, I didn't I didn't know that. I kind of thought they were all the same. I just hated them all. And you start to learn and grow. So it could be a hate of a person, place, or a thing, a situation. Man, I can't. I, can't, I hate this rain. We just getting hit with rain. Or is that another ooze or jelly or or pudding or something? I am not fighting those things. I'm I'm running my ass off because I hate those things. And just it doesn't have to be game wise or having to roll any dice or anything, but just establish that. Uh, as well as uh, love. Your cat pick something in the gaming group that you learn to love. The barbarian loves to hear the bard's music. The uh, fighter loves to hear the um, the wizard reading from his spell book. Um, you. Learn to uh, love the fresh air of the uh, the Elven Empire or something. Um, you know, pick and the love doesn't have to be specific. It doesn't have to be a person. It doesn't have to be a specific location. It could be a set of circumstances. I love just being out on the open road with my with uh, the wind at my back and my friends at my side. Or um, I'm in love with the princess, but she cannot return her love to me. And Incorporating that in terms of growing with the world, maybe there's an NPC and you just established this rapport with this NPC. You know, I, I love coming back to this tavern and, and, and talking with this NPC. Um, again, um, another line is fear. Uh, creating this an, an artificial, immutable fear. You know, it's the, it's the Indiana Jones, you know, I hate snakes thing um, because when he was young he fell into... He was on the train and fell into a you know a pit of snakes. So the character now does not like snakes, right? So you can come up with a fear, and it doesn't have to be a role playing fear like oh I get a minus two, to or I'm going to run or in fear or something of that nature. But it could be you know a, a, a fear that fireball. What the mage is causing a fireball? I'm the hell up out of here. And everyone's like no, the mage is, don't worry, it won't hurt you. And you're like you you tell me that now, but I've been hit by you know by burned by fire five times, and it's not fun, I'm out of here. It can be any kind of even small fears where, you know, I'm, I'm afraid to leave my drink out of my sight because I've known someone that was poisoned. And that fear can be created through in-game interaction, so when the character maybe fumbles a roll to climb up a tree, is afraid to start climbing trees now. Uh oh, I'm not doing that. I, last time I did that, I fell right out, right the hell out the tree, and a tree branch broke. And my my uh my fat ass dwarf is not bringing his ass up that tree. Not like you guys. Um, adopt. This one's a little harder, and as I go along, each one will get a little harder to do. But adopt, and that would be find some uh, verbal cue, a habit, uh, something that the other player characters are doing. And adopt their habit along with them. So, for an example, maybe the ranger likes to keep watch, and that dwarven character climbs up the tree to sit watch next to that ranger, or adopts the ranger's habit of putting his back against a tree and putting the crossbow in his in his lap. And so, your character begins adopting their techniques. The fighter, you know, places himself in the front line, and the cleric adopts the fighter's stance to stand in the front line as well with their shield and weapon drawn or something. Um, the, the, the bard sings a small tune in the evening before going to bed, and the, the, the barbarian adopts the habit of staying up at night to listen or hum along with the, the weird melodic tune that the bard sings at night. Adopting these habits, the, the, the elven warrior sharpens his elven blades at night, and the dwarf sits next to the elf without saying a word, pulls out his battle axe, and starts sharpening his blade in the same rhythm that the elf sharpens his blades. Not saying a word, but establishing, just through action, this rapport that they have with the characters. Um, so that you are growing as a character in-game. Our last uh, five would be change. Change something about your character. There was a great um, thread on one of my old videos about um, not playing a stereotype, and that is... Uh, a ranger ha whose hated enemy are orcs, and then someone comes to the game and plays a half-orc. And, you know, not immediately, well, my ranger would kill your half-orc, but instead finding out the half-orc was a blood relation. You know, and then you're like, well, wait a minute, that's my half-brother. They're in the game, and so the half-orc 
has to try to get along and maybe becomes fast friends with the ranger, and then the ranger starts thinking differently about orcs and half-orcs, yet the ranger is like a whirlwind of, of, of terror against orcs, and now the half-orc is thinking, man, that dude's my friend, but he slaughters my, my other half, the, the other kind that I hold as blood kin, like they're cutting them down like wheat. How do I rationalize those two? And so it would be changing your worldview. The wizard who changes his worldview about religion uh, the bard that changes his view about, you know, the, the, the gruff life of the barbarian. You know, learning to fish like the barbarian does with a spear at the side of the river or something. And learning to change how your character perceives the world after you've created them. Uh, support. Support would be picking, and this would be very, maybe very difficult to do this, but pick at least one or two people in the group and support their actions. The rogue wants to climb up the, uh, to climb into the tower to unlock the door and sneak around. Well, my fighter is going to, to help lift him up into the upper windows and stand there so he climbs on my shoulders. And it may not seem like a big deal. Maybe, the, you know, it's just a skill roll. But, and the rogue really doesn't need your help. But, you are supporting their efforts. The wizard wants to cast an area spell over all the enemy. And so, as a fighter, you, instead of just running out to the front lines, you're like, well, I'm going to run in, in front of the, the, and crouch down in front of the wizard and hold up my shield and defend him against any enemy attacks or something. Supporting another character in any way you can. And it doesn't have to be direct as far as like, quote unquote, a buff spell or something of that nature, but supporting their efforts to do something. Um, whether pleading with a guard to be led into the city, knowing you're hunted by enemy agents, and instead of taking over the role-playing aspect of it, you support them in their efforts, maybe pretending to be their vassal or their slave or something like that, and volunteering to do it. The next part of that would be need. Um, asking for help from someone else to achieve your goal. I need your help to do something. Um, the rogue, I, one of my best friends, uh, I just call him M., uh, M, you loved heist movies, and so as a thief, he would engage everyone to help him out. You know, of course, a lot of times there's some downtime. Okay, all the player characters sitting there twiddling thumbs while the thief sneaks around, makes a climb roll, makes a pick lock roll, sneaks through the guard, past the guards, up into the tower, around the door, through back to the courtyard to open up the door, right? And all the player characters are twiddling their thumbs. Instead, he would come up with an idea like, okay, um... Wizard, you knock out, you, you put the, the guard to sleep, and, and, and the fighter, you put his outfit on so you can pretend to be the guard. And the cleric, he can hoist, hoist me up on his shoulder so I can reach the upper windows and climb over the, over the fence, and I'll be right back, guys. And then that engages everybody else into it. So you need them to help out. You know, the wizard says, hey, fighter, I need you to protect me while I, I put these enemies to sleep or burn their bodies or something. And the fighter's like, I'll be right there. I'm going to climb up on top of the hill and defend them or something. And you may not, game-wise, numbers-wise, need them, but knowing that the other player character is needed will help them grow into a bond with your character, and you can grow to find out what their reaction is for you needing help. Last two would be discover. Discover the world. Discover the environment, the politics, the NPCs, the tavern, the gold standard, and the economics. The game master who creates their own homebrew world wants you to find out all the stuff they created. They don't want you to go from A to B to Z without looking out the windows of the railroad. They want you to see the world around you, around, and to discover what's going on. So ask a couple of questions and reference that information. Find out about the ancient kingdom find out about the, the, the enmity between these two lost tribes and reference that information later on in the game. And then maybe even incorporate that to your character. And the last one would be establish. Establish a place for your characters to fit into the world. Establish yourself into a thieves' guild or the local church or the nomadic tribe. Establish yourself within the dwarven um, catacombs or the elven woodland. Establish yourself within the community. You go back to the same tavern. You visit the same NPCs, if for no other reason than to say hello. Establish your character and make them a part of the world to become 
um, a member of a, of a, a uh, crafts guild and leather workers and armor workers and, and you support their efforts to become independent from give, being heavily tithed to the king. And I would even say establish enemies. Um, maybe there's a political enemy you have it's not so easy to just, you know, take them in a dark alley and cut their throat because they have friends as well. But this enemy hates you. Maybe they are, your paladin is part of a, a holy order and your presence disrupts the power um, play of the local church and the, head, the, the cleric that heads this royal uh, council doesn't like your presence because you're throwing a monkey wrench into them gaining power and authority within the church. And so they become your quote-unquote enemy, voting against you when you want to um, uh, get supplies for your group, voting against you when you want to establish a militia, and understanding that it may be difficult for you to quote-unquote fight them above board, but you may need to find dirt on them. So you use your friend the rogue to get blackmail. You use your, your, your friends to gather information um, about this cleric. Maybe the cleric isn't evil, but thinks that you've been sent by enemies themselves. So, again, ten ways to grow your character in-game. That would be um, to learn, hate, love, fear, adopt, change, support, need, discover, and establish your character in the world. And to go even further, especially for those that are more into the, the mechanics of the game, maybe this may change your mind about the, the build process that you want. So you're starting out at first or third level or something, and you've just, you said, well, you know, I want my character to become an eldritch knight, you know, like a magic-using knight or something. But maybe during the game you go, you know what, I'm, I'm really starting to bond with, with the paladin of the group. Maybe it would make more sense if my character becomes goes from fighter to cleric. That, that actually is, you know, I'm starting to feel that. That's, that's an organic growth for my character. Or the fighter has been uh, ro roaming along with the rogue and goes, you know what, I'm going to become a mercenary. I mean, this is my new lifestyle now. You know, getting money, uh, bounty hunting, and, and hunting enemies down, and, and, and pillaging lost caverns and, and uh, tombs for their treasures. And yeah, I, I think I'm going to do that. And the game master may even reward those activities. Like, you know what, the fighter, I, I think you... I think you should get proficiency with stealth. You've been you've been doing that quite a bit, and it makes sense. Or um, I'm going to give you proficiency with lock picking tools. You you know the the rogue's been giving you a set of five locks that he's been training you to pick each night, and it's been months now. I I think you should have that. Um, allow that opportunity to grow, and not that each player character should learn every other player character's skills, but just one element of growing and developing and uh, being organic in your development. So as always, I like to sign off with create, don't destroy. Create these, these growing methods. Challenge yourself to try to do at least two or three of these per game session, and I guarantee you, you'll see great results when other people respond to you in kind. So anyway, sorry, a little uh, congested, so I hope my voice wasn't too odd. As always, DBJ, and I am out. Thank you very much.